Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolfer Programming. Today we're going to be talking about the Steam Deck and ways in which to display the Steam Deck on a larger screen. So, Docs and Steam Link. So there's primarily two types of docs that you can use for the Steam Deck in my research. And neither, well, two main types that you might consider. You want to have a dock with power delivery. And docks that have power delivery usually have an extra USB-C port and it's only used for the power to transfer through. This is a cheap PinePhone dock and you can find lots of docks just like this for around $25. <clears throat> this one's got some USB 2 ports which is fine for like controllers and an HDMI port and an Ethernet port. <clears throat> On the, uh, the problem with these cheaper docks though is that the resolution typically only goes to 40, 4K at 60 hertz, or sorry, 4K at 30 hertz. And um, for the, the but the Steam Deck supports up to 4K at 60 hertz. Now you're not going to play the newest titles at 4K 60 hertz. In fact, most games are going to be running, you know, around 720p to 1080p at 30 to 60 hertz. But some games will run at 1080p or 720p at 60 hertz and so for that you really want one that supports uh, 60 hertz at 4k because if you're running 4k at 30 hertz even if you're running trying to run your game at 720p at 60 frames per second you're you're only going to output 30 and so for that you usually need to spend a little more money <clears throat> there's some uh, docks that recently came out specifically for the Steam Deck and I looked at those but some of the problems I saw with them is that the wire is pretty short, right? And um, so I opted for something a little bit more expensive. And when you get a dock that's not made for the Steam Dock, you might also want to get a, um, a stand. And this was like $12 on Amazon. There's like, you know, you could probably 3D print this yourself, but it has a little nice rubber insole there to keep it uh, from moving. And this dock is nice because, you know, you can keep it pretty far from the Steam Deck. So if you want to have like some controller receiver or keyboard receiver, you can have this a little closer to you than the Steam Deck is. And so let's look at what it has on it. So this thing is pretty fully loaded. I got this at Micro Center and I think it's a Micro Center brand. It was $10 off, normally $89 and I got it for $79. And it's got pretty much everything we need. It's got power delivery and you see it says power delivery 3.0. It's got USB 3.0 ports, it has USB 2.0 ports, it has HDMI, it has display port, it has VGA, and it even has an audio jack, um, which, you know, the Steam Deck has one, so not going to be super useful for us, but it's there. And uh, the SD card slot is pretty nice if you're on the desktop and you want to clone your SD card to another one, you can do that here. And um, so, you know, it doesn't really stand... Um, it's not made for the Steam Deck, it's just made for a computer. It looks like they were trying to make it kind of Mac-like with aluminum. Um, but this works pretty good, and it outputs 4K as 60 frames per second, pretty good. And um, you can even have multiple displays, which we'll try to show at the end. So here we have the Steam Link app in my TV, and we have the uh, Steam Deck right next to it. Um, and we see here in the menu section that allows me to pick my Steam Deck. Now both my TV and my Steam Deck are connected to 5G Wi-Fi and are right next to the 5G router. So generally the connection is pretty good. But you can see here that the resolution on the Steam Deck is 16 by 10 and the resolution on the TV is 16 by 9 and because of that things look a little bit squashed. And you can really see that in games that are 16 by 9. So, for example, if we want to go into an emulator, such as a Wii U emulator, and we play a game, see it load up. We can see we've got bars on the top and the bottom, because that's what the Steam Deck has. And so the image is going to end up being squished in game. However, controllers hooked up work just fine, 
Um, the image doesn't look laggy, it doesn't look pixelated. If you if you at least got a good connection, it's gonna look it's gonna look pretty good. Actually my Xbox controller just lost connection. I think the battery's dying. And I really haven't found a way to edit the display. So now let's take a look at it in um, desktop mode. So here we're streaming the Steam Deck from big picture mode in the desktop, but it actually has the same problems. Everything that gets launched will uh, end up being in a squished screen. So we can try a game like Halo. Actually, I don't even know if this will launch in desktop mode. So Halo Infinite, I have a lot of problems with the resolution. It doesn't seem to respect um, you know, custom resolutions. It seems to only want to run a 16 by 10 on the Steam Deck no matter what you do. The nice thing about using the Steam Link though is once you get into a game, you can then switch over to a controller that's hooked up to your Steam Deck. You see the resolution scale is actually doing a 16 by 10, even though the window size is supposed to be um, 1280 times 720. And so, while it's close, the, uh, the images just look a little bit stretched. But this is totally playable. If this is one way you want to, you know, continue the game online on the big screen. And you see there's some bugs here trying to get into the Steam menu, so we have to go over on the Steam Deck and kill the game manually. So you see here we've got the Steam Deck over in the corner attached to the dock. And over here we have the image coming out very clearly. And if we check our TV settings, um, you probably can't see that video. Let me pull that up again. You see that we are at 4K at 60. Exactly where we want to be. And for this, I put the client and I put the OS and beta channel. And things work really well here. And I'll be controlling this with the Steam controller, which I'm actually starting to really enjoy. It's too bad they don't make them anymore. I picked it up for $5 when it was on sale. And things work really well here. So we can go um, into a game. And we see that everything is in the proper aspect ratio. There's no black bars. And it's actually rendering the game in uh, 720p. And the Steam basically draws the game on a 720p canvas and then upscales that to 40k. And so I think this is probably running closer to 30. Um, but it looks good and the upscaling looks really good and this probably has something to do with the AMD chip inside. 
Um, I'm not familiar with all the different terminology, the graphics terminology. You see everything works really good. Not every game works good. Emulators uh, that are running natively at 16 by 9 look really great in the dock. A lot of games do look really good. Um, let's go to uh, installed and let's pull up something that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look at the remake of Spire of the Dragon. And this game really brings back some nostalgia for me because I used to play Spyro the Dragon 1 on a demo disc on PlayStation 1 because we only had the demo disc and we didn't have the money to buy the game. But the demo disc came out either with our PlayStation or in a magazine or something. And so I played that first level where I just run around, ran around and shot fire at sheep over and over and over. So everything looks really great. <clears throat> so to change the rendered resolution, you can generally go into the um, properties and go into the game resolution and you can pick one. And what I thought was really amazing about this is that it worked on emulators, so <laughs> at least at the 720p that I tested. But it didn't work in the stable branch, so you'll definitely want to stick to stable. Going into desktop mode on your TV works really great as well. <laughs> and um, personally for me, I have it set to um, 1080p for the desktop because the icons were a little too, uh, too small for me, but we can change it back to 4K. And also some of the automatic resolution adjustment isn't, doesn't work in regular desktop mode. So I actually have the laptop screen disabled. Um, we can enable it and just have dual screens. And we can pick a uh, really nice high resolution. Which will give us this really big... And you can use this to watch, you know, watch videos on, on the interwebs. You can do your chatting on the TV as well. See, I was looking into compiling CMU natively. It's currently running the Windows version. We can have our chat apps, <clears throat> like Fluffy Chat. They look really good. So let's go take a look at the desktop on a multi-monitor setup. Okay, so here we have the Steam Deck working as a desktop computer. So, we've got the Steam Deck plugged in on top with its stand on top of my laptop. We have the dock, which I recently purchased from Micro Center. We've got a keyboard and mouse. And let's take a look at the display situation. So we're actually powering three external displays and two of them are just kind of cheap ones I got from thrift stores and then we have one nice gaming monitor which is actually a G-Sync monitor I wish I hadn't have bought it, I wish I had bought a FreeSync monitor but that's where we're at right now. So and it's driving the displays really well you see here we have um, Brave Browser and um, I can drag it all the way across to all the different monitors 
I've got here a terminal where I'm SSH'd into my main desktop, which is actually plugged in over there. And um, I've got a fluffy chat window up here, so I could sit there and do chats. Um, let's see if you can focus. I've got some settings on the deck. And uh, I've got a code editor over there, so I can even do some work remotely. This is connected to my desktop through SSH. VS Code can do that. And everything works really good. In fact, you know, if you don't have speakers with you, you can even play it through the uh, Steam Deck speakers. Massive video. I figure I won't get a copyright strike for that. I even have an SSD connected, which I can access. I can access the SD card. And it's a pretty good workstation, so this is really great for configuring emulators. Uh, you can play games. Um, you know, if you want to play Steam games, I can launch, for example, let's watch launch Wolfenstein 3D. I, mean, I can imagine if I was the parent of a teenager. Looks like it didn't quite get into full screen mode. So it's Linux, it's a little buggy. I go ahead and quit. Get this thing out. <laughs> so it looks like I got froze. But generally, um, and that's actually been my experience using the desktop mode for playing games. Like it's just very easy for everything to freeze. So when you're in the regular Steam UI, you've kind of got this like exit game function that works really well. And so if something freezes, you can just exit out or it closes out automatically. But yeah, if I would, like I was saying, if I was a parent of a teenager and I was looking at getting them a computer, honestly, this thing would be really nice because you know, they're still playing a lot of games, they're still thinking about games, but if you get them a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard with the dock, then they've also got something that they can do homework on or they can study. So. Okay, that's it. That's all I got for you guys, everyone. Um, did you like this video? Do you want to see more stuff using the Steam Deck as a programming device, more into Steam Deck video games? I really like it because it's such a great, you know, FOSS device. Um, it, it runs FOSS stuff great. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps feed the algorithm. And yeah, have a good day.